So what I really want to talk to you guys about today is some of the questions that we get a lot on a daily basis. Uh, when we're at air shows, phone calls that we get in, and kind of the things that people don't quite understand completely. One of those things is the sourcing of our engine. They seem to think that we rebuild engines when they're at like 100,000 miles, 200,000 miles, and we're rebuild, breaking the whole engine down and rebuilding it, like overhauling an engine, for example. That's really not what we do at all. Um, what we do is we source engines that have extremely low mileage. And um, any modern car today, as you know, uh, 1,000, 5,000 miles on a car is, is nothing. And a lot of times, the engines that we get have two miles on them, three miles on them, five miles on them. And I'll show you later in some pictures. We use one trusted source for most of all of our engines from the Mitsubishi all the way up to the Honda Accord engine. So we have a trusted source that goes through a list of things that we require. And then we go through a list of things that, you know, is important to us um, when the engine gets here. And, you know, we have right of refusal, whether we want it, whether we don't. Um, so we're very picky about what we choose and having a car and an engine that's mass produced the way it is like automotive is enables us to do that. We're able to be picky, we're able to be precise, we're able to get low mileage and these engines come in with a VIN number. So they all come in with a VIN number. So you can go into Carfax, you can insert this all into Carfax, find out exactly where it was hit, find out exactly the odometer reading. And nine times out of 10, I'm able to get pictures of the car from the source that we use, the pictures of the odometer reading. You can see that there's no damage to the front end of the car. A lot of them, you still see the stickers, um, you know, the white packing that almost comes on and when they ship. So you're able to see that, so a lot of them wind up with the shipping damage and that's how we wind up getting a lot of our engines is shipping damage. Um, so that's, that's one thing that we do is the sourcing. And that enables us to have the 2019, 2020, or whatever years to come, the newest technology without spending big bucks. Obviously, we're not buying the cars and taking the engines out of them. That's not economical whatsoever. This is the, the best way for us, for us to do that. Instead of having blocks that are, you know, you can go online and buy any kind of engine block. You can use a 10, 15, 20-year-old block um, and start sourcing and putting in your own camshafts and pistons and start doing all of that yourself and and that's a whole different thing than what we do um, and that kind of brings me to talking about old new versus new technology um, people want to say what is it back to the the old or the used engines it's not really old and used at all if you if you look at the mileage on a car and if you have any you know common sense whatsoever you know a 2019 engine is going to be far more advanced than something that was built in 2000 or 1990 and is available for everybody. So it's a completely, and then, and then you start having to put together your own pistons, your own camshafts, and you're, you get into all this custom work and you have somebody, and hopefully you trust, building this, building this engine wherever they're building it and doing custom dyno work, dyno work and, and that turns into an issue. And it turns into an issue when perhaps something breaks and you need to replace it. So when you have to go and replace this, it's not something they're gonna be able to go to Advanced Auto and get and grab and be back up in the air and fix and change. And, and hopefully the company that you bought this engine from to begin with is even still around. We all know the economy can change, things can change. And uh, when that happens, if that company isn't around and you need a custom part, what next? Are you going to start doing it all yourself? Uh, what happens now? So that's one of the things we pride ourselves in is we don't change the internals of the Honda engine at all. We let someone who specializes in that, who has billions of dollars in research and development, they did that aspect for us. Um, we concentrated on what we do, which is the gearbox, the mounting, the computer, the, hot, the wiring, uh, simple installation. So we can really concentrate our time and our efforts in the area where it really counts. And um, you know, that, that's, that's really important to us for people to be able to source their own stuff and not being a slave to the manufacturer and being able to really never be grounded at any point in time if it's avoidable. The idea is to enjoy flight, to do it affordably, and to uh, not have to go making and sourcing and building and, and figuring it out all on your own.
and that's not our goal at all. So that that's that's why to me the the building custom and to our aspect of what we do that can that can be a problem. Um, something else I kind of want to go over is. You know, you have a lot of people that run something on a dyno and do their own custom dyno work. And, and, and that's fine, um, but that does not compute over to a flying aircraft, for example. You can run anything on a dyno to max RPM, get all the power you want out of it. That means nothing as far as longevity, testing, in-flight hours, altitude testing, um, just, just all around. So to run anything on a dyno does not does not mean it's necessarily fit for your aircraft. Um, obviously we do dyno work. Um, a specialist does it for us, not ourselves necessarily. Uh, we'd much rather somebody else who is a specialist in that field handle that aspect. Again, concentrating our time and efforts where it's needed. Um, so that's, that's, that's another thing. And the biggest thing, I guess, is real testing and flying your own engines is something that's really important to us. You have a lot of salespeople and a lot of people that'll talk and say a lot of great things about something that they're not necessarily flying themselves or something that they're not testing or just you, you to sell a product and not thoroughly test it is, is definitely not what you want. And that goes back to Finding if, if you're looking into an engine, especially if you're looking into an engine for a very specific aircraft, that company should be able to supply you with at least three people that aren't salespeople, that aren't testing people, that are real customers, flying with a complete kit, with plenty of hours on it. Um, and obviously, anybody can be a guinea pig, and some people like to be the first for anything. But really, the company themselves should be the one testing before selling to the public. And that's what we do. Um, you know, we, we fly our plane all over the country. We push it to its limits. We push it to the limits some more. And, and we go from there and we learn. And we never stop improving. Um, so that's just, that's just one thing that we do. And a lot of people, price. Um, we are still the most affordable aircraft engine on the market. Um, we will always try to keep it that way. And something that we do offer that a lot of people don't offer is a very full and complete firewall forward kit from everything from the coolant um, to the batteries to the pliers that you have to use to squeeze down the clamps to all the hosing that you need. So when I, when I quote people a price, I give them you know absolutely everything under the sun from their propeller to their coolant to the cowling and the mount and everything they're gonna need. So they're kind of putting it together like a Lego kit instead of doing a lot of people start putting it together, realize they need a piece, have to order it, wait another week, pay more in shipping, and all of it just becomes very long and tedious when it doesn't need to be. We already know what's required, so why not supply all of it as a kit and have it ready to go? And by ready to go, nine times out of 10, depending, you know, if it's a, it's a one-off or a first aircraft that we're doing, it might take us a couple weeks. Um, but other than that, we have no lead time when it comes to any of our engines. So we can ship typically next day. All of it's in stock. We have stock of absolutely everything all the time. Uh, that's, that's not an issue. Um, again, that goes back to sourcing the engines in the mass quantities that we do. And that enables us to have everything available. Um, so that, that's really important as well. Nobody should really have to be waiting, <laughs> to me, five months or six months or a year for, for their engine. There's just no reason for it. So keep building, start installing the engine, start flying. You know, that's all important for us, for you to keep moving forward. Um, all that being said, I mean, that, that brings us back into the firewall forward and price. Um, I'll always talk to everybody about that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that's something that's, you know, really important to us. You know, you can make payments, you can, you can put a down payment, you can work with us, we'll always work with you and we can supply absolutely everything you need, even extras with heaters and steel bungees and everything for anywhere from 16 to $20,000, depending on what you want. And that's including your propeller, so you'll be ready to go. And people underestimate that fact when, um, for example, okay, uh, a 915 IS, I think the engine alone is like $37,000. You could get two engines and the full firework kits and everything and that's not to say that price 
is a huge point for some people, but the overall fuel efficiency that you're gonna get, the overall price of maintenance, it all becomes a huge factor and you start wondering why more and more people don't see it, especially when you have a proven product. We have almost a thousand customers out there now. We have those that have over a thousand hours. We do our own testing. That's, that's outside of ourselves, of course. And when we do our testing, it's not just loafing around, you know, we push everything to the limits and that's, that's important for us to do. Um, obviously, as an engine manufacturer, we're searching for problems. We're looking for problems and we're trying to create problems. Um, so testing is something we never stop doing. And, and that's fun, um, but it's, it is something we never stop doing and we do it for the greater good. Uh, we do it to, like again, never, st never stop improving on the engine. There's been times where we have upgrades or things that we really, you know, we really would like for people to do, and we try to, um, especially existing customers, offer those at a cost value so they could just have the greatest and the best and the newest thing available instead of, you know, starting from scratch and just settling on good enough. And that's something that we don't want to do. We never want to settle on good enough. Um, I think that about covers up my list, but I just some of the things that I really wanted to go over with all of you and. Um, I'd really like to hear if you guys have any more questions about certain things and if something really bothers you, what you can do about it, or if you have a question about how we source our engines and how are you supposed to know you're getting a good engine. Um, I mean, for example, I have all the paperwork. I can get you pictures of the vehicle. I can get you the VIN number. It's all on your vehicle. But I think the biggest thing to harp on there is the amount of hours, the amount of people flying with zero issues. And at some point that doesn't even really become a question anymore when it's a proven product and it's proven its reliability without you know having to having to even supply all that information so we can supply all the information we can show you the customers we can we can give you anything you need so none of that is not up for discussion we're more than welcome to tell you what engine we have uh, how we source it what the VIN is how much mileage is on it what the changes are made, you know, there's there's no question that ever goes unanswered. So I think that's uh, something important and I think that about wraps up what I had to say. And uh, yeah. There's an amazing amount of people that not only misunderstand what we do here at Viking Aircraft Engines, but also competition and aircraft manufacturers, they want to downplay what we do because it's a threat to them. Uh, for us to be able to, you know, offer 2020 aircraft engines from Honda with zero miles or 10 miles or a few hundred miles is a real threat to other uh, engine manufacturers and also uh, aircraft manufacturers that are trying to sell aircraft kits and completed airplanes for a huge amount of profits where they can collect uh, three to five thousand dollars on an engine sale and. Uh, maybe five to six thousand dollars on an airplane kit and it goes on and on and on so for many people it's important to raise the price of the total package that they're selling so that it is as high as possible and they can collect a percentage over that and so it becomes a business rather than a love for aviation so what we've got here is um, you know a lot of engines that have been built into a 130 horsepower engine we've got one here that's a turbo and there's a few other turbos here there's engines over here that are ready to ship to customers. Uh, there's engines that are here that are being test run. But what we're gonna show in this video is what do we start with as far as when we start working on these engines. So we're gonna break down this engine that just came in this morning, take a look at all the pieces, um, and just show exactly what your engine would look like when we start working on it from the Honda car engine. Now when the engine comes in, of course, uh, we'll just uh, remove the basic paperwork and give that to the office for our record keeping. And that, of course, shows a lot of details about the engine itself. And then unwrap and start to uh, verify that the engine has everything that it's supposed to have as far as parts. So we go in there and now this one comes with a starter so you know of course the starter then comes from the same vehicle so
So you also have a brand new starter with that. In this case, like four miles on the whole assembly. Um, then just the basics, you know, pull the dipstick, check the oil. And uh, what we're gonna do next is uh, just kind of zoom in on different parts. And once we do that, we can, um, you know, give a clear understanding to you, the purchaser of these engines, what we're talking about when we're saying that they are as close to new as, uh, as we can get. The advantage, of course, being that you will pick up this uh, really low uh, mileage, high technology engine that in some cases came out of uh, an Accord that cost $40,000. You'll be able to buy the whole engine, like for instance, the fit engine, 130, for just a little bit over $10,000. And that's uh, all converted to an airplane engine. Uh, Alyssa will explain a little bit about the process of searching these engines and the nice people that she works with to obtain them. Um, and I'm going to show you a little bit more of the details of each component on the engine. Obviously one of the first things you'd want to do is pull the dipstick on any engine and clearly look at the, what the oil looks like in addition to then sample some oil um, and uh, cut the, air, the oil filter open. But as a preliminary, just quick check of the condition of the engine, you just pull the dipstick out and the oil is very, very clean. There's obviously not much oil in it, but we don't find any contaminations. Uh, on the dipstick itself. The engine, when it arrives, is equipped with all the accessories, such as the belt tensioner for the accessory belt, the crankshaft pulley, and the coolant pump. Um, just spinning the accessories of that will verify if there was ever any uh, thing that bumped into it either in shipping or um, prior to that and we don't on this one we don't see anything like that it spins very nice and of course you can see the condition of the castings and everything here uh, is like it came off of the showroom floor of course there's a lot of things that could kind of demonstrate the mileage of an engine um, usually of course an old engine would not have an exhaust flange that brand new like that and it just shows you the, the low mileage. Let's do that to a few of the components around this engine. One obviously obvious thing that needs to be looked on is the uh, the, the, sp are the spark plugs. So uh, pull one of the coils out. As you can see there are four individual coils here. You, you never want to uh, fly behind any kind of an engine that doesn't, a modern engine like this you know like any engine that uses a computer where you don't have four individual coils. If there's just a coil to drive two plugs and one to drive the other plug, that's kind of an old fashioned computer. And it basically means that if you were to lose a coil, it, you would lose two cylinders, which is, you know, that's, that's something that is so easy to make redundant, to have individual coils and individual spark plugs and individual firing of them through the ECU that you never want to see anything like that. Um, so we got that off. I cracked the plug a little bit here a second ago. And then there are a lot of threads on these modern plugs. You obviously, you'll never have a problem with stripping the threads, like maybe on some older engines. It only had a few threads. And then we'll pick one out of here. See how far down it is in the head. And it's uh, like a brand new plug because it is a brand new plug. So that's good. And of course, we would check all of them. We would check compression, we would boroscope the cylinders and all the prudent things like that just to make sure that the customer is receiving a, an excellent, excellent engine. Okay. All right, so here's the uh, starter motor that came with it. As you can tell, uh, it's the original Honda. There are uh, aftermarket starter motors and, and things like that we could throw on there, but uh, we'd rather use the one that uh, was designed and came with the engine. As you can tell, another uh, super nice part that really has no mileage and really puts the people to shame that want to uh, label uh, Viking aircraft engines as a, a company that uses uh, old engines and so forth and so on. 
Here's the drive plate of the uh, engine. And as you can see, also brand new. It's a little bit sad that we kind of have to prove ourselves, <clears throat> but it's really kind of come to that because we also obviously want people to understand what they're getting. Um, we realize that not everyone knows that salvage engines in today's world are can be had almost brand new. Uh, obviously, if this, this, this engine had been running any length of time, the throttle body would be, you would be able to see traces of... Um, oil and, and uh, residue from the engine. So every part of this engine, as good as brand new, for a, a third to a quarter of the money.